Hello, today I want to talk to you about the telescope and how to find your dungeons. I'm going to cover the basics of looking for dungeons on the map, how to find your four instrument dungeons, and how to find Kakariko Crypt. So starting with the fundamentals, the very first thing and most basic part of finding dungeons is the terrain, right? Each dungeon has a specific terrain it's associated with. On the right hand side we can see Kakariko Village, and around it is grassland. Grass and Kakariko Village go together. That will tell you where your dungeons are based on the terrain type. The next part of that is that the terrain overlaps around the edges. Here, see here, we can see the desert. The desert tile right there is that white strip. And that means that there's more desert this way and that our dungeon's going to be down over here. On the left hand side, we can see this darker strip, and that's the forest edge, which means our dungeon's going to be over this way. So we learn our dungeon tiles and our edges, and we can use that to find where to go. And part of that is that the edges are copied over, right? So here we have some trees. There's three trees right here, and those are actually going to be copied over into the other tile. There's never just one tree. There's always two trees, okay? So that lets us use the edge to find our dungeons because they have very distinct borders. So we can find our dungeons rather easily, well, quickly, I'd say, by looking for the edges and not for the tile of itself, okay? Let's start with Temple Storms. Temple Storms has some key features. It's always in the top row. It's always surrounded by mountains, right? So you find the mountains, you go north, you're gonna find Temple Storms, or you're gonna find the Windmill Hut. The windmill hut is always beneath it in the middle, right? Beneath it in the middle. One catch, though, is that Temple of Storms has two different ways that it can be. One where the dungeon is in the top left-hand corner, and the other where the dungeon is in the top right-hand corner. It can be flipped horizontally. So using these pieces, we can develop a strategy for finding it. And this is how I think most runners do. This is how I started to do it. Is that we go north until we find the windmill hut. So in this example, I went along the castle, and then I went north. I sound the windmill hunt, and I'm like, oh, okay, I know where the dungeon is. The problem is that I don't know the orientation. The dungeon could be the top left or right, so I have to keep moving forward, check the orientation, and as I got closer, oh, yeah, there it is. It's right up over there. The problem is that, well, it's not really a problem. Like, this is a good way to do it. There's a better way, a faster way, a way that you could have seen it from the very, very first tile, okay? And that's to use one of its distinct features, the distinct bottom edge. There's nothing quite like that bottom edge in the cliffs anywhere, okay? If we take a look at the front, the front has this little walkway in the middle. It also has this water tile, the river that goes around it, right? It's got a, a central walkway and a river. The back also has this little centerish walkway. But also has this really dark dot, which is the wind turbine. <laughs> the map is actually super detailed. You can see almost everything from the map on each specific tile. So that dark one is the turbine towards the back door. We compare it to the generic tiles. Generic tiles have two possible borders on the top and bottom. One is a solid wall. That wall is, it means you can't go up it unless you find like a stepping stone or some way to go north. And the other is a bunch of like little walkways between. That looks nothing like the front or the back entrance. You know, those have a center walkway in a river or a center walkway with a really dark spot on it. So using this knowledge, we can see that the front entrance is right there. There's that center walkway and a little river. And sure enough, we also know that its orientation is up over there. There's Temple of Storms. It's in the top left. So using those edges, you can really find Temple of Storms very, very quickly. About Gerudo Ruins. Gerudo Ruins is <laughs> very easy to find. It's in one of four spots. Blam, 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 right in the corner. And the terrain type that it has is desert. So you see some desert, you know which corner it's going to be. But what if the desert's huge? Can you tell if it's north or south just by finding one tile? Well, actually, yes, you can. Because the desert will never bleed over the fifth, that meridian. It will never cross the middle. It will always be in the bottom five or the top five. So once you see a tile, you should know exactly where the desert is and the dungeon is. So here's an example. You can see that white strip on the left-hand side. That's the desert. It's on the bottom half. So we know that the dungeon's going to be in the bottom left-hand corner. 
sure enough, as we explore, there's more desert, and there's the dungeon itself. So pretty easy. Find your desert edge, you know where the dungeon's at. Lost Swamp. Lost Swamp's kind of fun. So, you got forests, go to the forest, and you'll see your dungeon. And the one that makes it really easy to find is that plus looking tile, Lost Woods. Lost Woods is always beneath it and will tell you where to go. The other thing that you might not know is that Lost Swamp is always on the second or ninth column. Along with that, it must be two or more tiles away from the castle. Right, so if it's not on the right, we can see that it's not. And that's one tile. So that means the right could never have possibly been the lost swamp, right? There's no way it could have been over there. It must have been on the left hand side. So we can use that knowledge to find it, and we can also use the details of these tiles, like lost woods. Will the edges help us? Oh, yes, they will. The edges have a very unique feature, which is that center walkway. So you recognize that center walkway? You probably have found lost woods. So here's an example. We can see that there's this center entrance over here with some trees by the edge. If we keep going farther, we see that, yes, it is. That's Lost Woods right there, which means that above it's going to be our dungeon, Lost Swamp. So you can use these center walkways or entrances uh, around Lost Woods to identify it and find your dungeon. What about the edges of Lost Swamp? Can we use those edges to find the dungeon? Well, yes, you can some of the time. But first, I need to talk about parallel universes. I'm sorry, I mean swamp trees. Swamp trees do not mirror like everything else. Swamp trees are big on the bottom edge and small on the top, right? So in this little mini map, there's a big tree right next to Zelda's head. If we go into the game, we can see there's a big tree right there and a small tree on the other side. On the right, there's a big tree. Well, is it gonna be big on the other side? No, it's not. It's going to be small. So Swamp walls are lopsided. The corners are the exception. We don't have to worry about that too much. So, using that knowledge, does that apply to here? And yes, it does. We would expect big trees along those borders, but they're not. They're small. That means we can find our dungeon, right? So, here's an example of that. We know where Lost Swamp is because we can see small tree walls right over here. Spend a little further, yep, it's absolutely right there. Now I gotta take a little moment to talk about the gauntlet and Link's house before going to Kakariko. The gauntlet is this stupid tile. It's a two by one, has a purple chest on it, there's five variations, we don't need to cover those. What's important is that the entrances cannot be blocked, meaning it can never be around the edge, right? So we can know the rules to eliminate where it could possibly be. This is important for Kakariko later. Same thing with Link's house. We know some rules about Link's house. It has to be in the bottom. It's gonna be next to the beach on the bottom in these six tiles. So we're on to Kakariko Crypt. Whew. Basic rules, grassland. It's a little tricky because there's a lot of grassland and you know you kinda of have to wander around a little bit more. But there's some other placement rules, right? It can never be around the border, just like the gauntlet. And it can never be above the castle or right next to it. So we can see it right here. The key feature though is those edges. It's got some very specific edges, which we'll take a look at right now. So those edges and entrances are rather strange. Um, if you look at the top, you can see the house kind of extends to the, the tile above it, right? And that's how I first learned to do it. I was like, oh wait, that house kind of bleeds up. That's definitely gotta be where Kakariko is if I learn how to look for that house. Well, that's not quite true because of Link's house. Link's house also has a roof that bleeds up a little bit. And one of the gauntlets kind of looks like that as well, which is what we talked about a little before. There's also the entrances. These entrances are centralized, and they have a weird little taper or, taper or kind of a funnel. So we can use these entrances or the top to kind of tell us where we're going to go. The entrances can have a little gotcha because they could look like the gauntlet as well, but we'll get to know more as we move closer to it and see those. Let's take an example. In this example, we know exactly where Kakariko Crypt is, right? It's right here. We know because it's not the gauntlet, because we can see the gauntlet right there. It's that two by Y tile. The center might have looked like Lost Swamp, right? Uh, the Lost Woods entrance has a narrow entrance, but that's over there, so we know it's not there. It can't be that. And our Kakariko is right there for sure, okay? Is there a better way to do this? Is there another way, a faster way? If you haven't figured out the format from doing it, yes, there is. 
there are the big trees in the corner of the dungeon. Big trees in the corner are very unique. You might think that they're not, right? Because there's what about the walls in the grassland? Well, grassland walls are actually always small. If we look at the minimap, we see this wall here. And on the game itself in the background, it's a row of small trees, right? So walls will never be big trees for the grassland. And in the corner, those big trees will never, there's never a random one. They're always part of a specific tile, right? It's part of why I showed you Link's House in the Gauntlet. Those ones have big trees in the corner. So does Lake Hylia, but that one we don't have to worry about. So it's either Link's House, the Gauntlet, or Kakariko Village if you see a big tree in the corner. So let's roll our previous example back where we used our entrances to Kakariko to figure, figure it out. We can actually use a big tree in the corner right here to find the dungeon. We know that big tree can't be towards the gauntlet because the gauntlet would be too close and that it must be Kakariko. So we could have used that. Well, how about another example? That seemed like a kind of a straw man. So here we know exactly where Kakariko is because of the big tree right there. That cannot be the gauntlet, right? You might ask, well, what about the gauntlet? Isn't the gauntlet going to be there? It could have a big tree in the corner. That's great. Nope, it's going to be Kakariko because the gauntlet can't fit there. Remember, the gauntlet can't go into the edge of the map. So that must be Kakariko. And if we move closer, we'll see that, oh, there's the roof of Kakariko. Yeah, we, that's where Link's taking a nap. And we go a bit farther, and that's absolutely Kakariko Dungeon. So if you use the big tree in the corner, along with a few other rules about gauntlets and Link's house, you can find the Kakariko Crypt early. On to our last dungeon, the Frozen Grotto. All right, now to find the Frozen Grotto, first you need to travel from the castle into the mists of North Uldra, where I discover the mystical lost woods, learn to accept your feelings, and sing a power ballad about it. Then continue on into the unknown, you'll find the Frozen Grotto, Atta Holland, where you discover the links to your heritage, the dark secrets of your past, and find the courage to save Hyrule Kingdom. Or you could just, like, go south from the castle. 